Welcome back to the Lackluster channel. Today's video is an update of the Karen Garner case that we covered recently, where a 73-year-old woman was brutalized by Loveland Police Department officers. To view the two original videos, check the description for links or use the cards on the top of the screen. Briefly, Karen Garner was 73 and diagnosed with dementia and sensory aphasia. Walmart employees called law enforcement when she forgot to pay for several items. Officer Austin Hopp was first to arrive on scene and threw her to the ground several times while attempting to arrest her. Her. Officer Daria Jalali arrived on scene shortly after and assisted in the arrest, and Miss Garner suffered several injuries. Later, they laughed about her injuries while watching the body cam footage. None of the officers involved reported her injuries, but nearly eight months after the incident, the family filed a federal lawsuit and the department finally put the officers on leave, claiming that it was the first time that they had heard of the case. Neither officer is employed by the department anymore, but their supervisor still is despite his involvement. Officer Hopp has now been charged with the following, felony assault causing serious bodily injury, felony attempt to influence an officer, and a misdemeanor misconduct charge. Jalali now faces the following, misdemeanor failure to report use of force, misdemeanor failure to intervene, and a misdemeanor misconduct charge. Both officers are out on bail, and I will update you in the future regarding their trials. The police chief responded in the following press release. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for being here and for covering this very important piece of uh, uh, news today. My name is Robert Tyser. That's T-I-C-E-R. I'm the chief of police here for the city of Loveland. Today, I'm here to respond to District Attorney Gordon McLaughlin's decision to charge two former Loveland police officers following the arrest of Karen Garner last summer. I fully support these charges. I'll say it again. I fully support these charges. We accept and understand the district attorney's decision to pursue criminal charges against these individuals, and we will continue to cooperate with this investigation. While we cannot comment specifically on the allegations, so as to not jeopardize the criminal case. We support any effort to make sure any wrong dealing is dealt with appropriately. These two individuals are no longer any way associated with our department. Their actions and attitudes are in direct contrast to the culture we strive to achieve here at the Loveland Police Department. We understand the desire for accountability and justice, and we are seeing that today for Ms. Ms. Garner with the charges being filed by the district attorney's office. As demonstrated on April 14th, once we became aware of the severity of Ms. Garner's injuries, if an officer's actions violate our policies and or our laws, we, were, we will work very quickly and firmly to address it. We understand the severity of this incident, and as such I have requested, in addition to the criminal proceedings, an independent third-party internal affairs investigation overseen by the city's Human Resources Department. As part of our mission to serve and protect, we've taken a number of actions since April 14th. First, the majority of our police officers have now undergone Alzheimer's awareness training. This began within a week of my learning about how Ms. Garner was treated. Secondly, Starting next month, we will begin instituting additional de-escalation training. When officers get the opportunity to rely on time and distance to slow down their encounters with the public and can do it safely, we want to take advantage of those opportunities. Thirdly, since the first of this year, an assistant city attorney with our, with our city of Loveland reviews all use of force cases, and in fact, reviews are going back uh, to the year 2019. This will be for all use of forces cases moving forward. This extra layer of scrutiny is important to not only our department, but to the community, the community that we serve to ensure the policies and laws are being followed. Additionally, all officers will continue to undergo extensive crisis intervention training, a program that we have had in place here for nearly 15 years. We will continue to focus in that area. In addition to this independent investigation, 
A comprehensive assessment of the police department will also be conducted by this third party team. I'm happy to take any questions that you may have today. Thank you. Chief, why did it take so long to look into this case and when did you first see that body camera video? I first saw that body camera video on April 14th when it was posted online as we were notified of the federal lawsuit. Uh, questions related to why and how long it took for the, that notification to occur will no doubt occur uh, through the criminal investigation. And I believe those questions will be asked and answered in the third party investigation. That's the, that's the intent of finding all those answers out. Who's part of the third party team? The third party team has not yet been announced. Our human resources department will be doing an independent investigation and they will be hiring a third party investigative team to handle it outside of the police department to uh, conduct that investigation. So I do not have that answer yet. Yes, sir. The question is, how, how often does this happen? We do not believe this happens uh, often. We found out uh, nearly eight months later that this had occurred. We took swift actions at that point to contact the district attorney to implement the uh, CERT team and to find out why that happened. But that is not a common practice in our organization. Yes, ma'am. The sergeant is still on administrative leave. Would you guys have found out about this without this federal investigation or the federal lawsuit? I do not know if we would have found out about that without the federal lawsuit. Uh, it, it, perhaps if it would have come in through a different channel, but that's how we were notified of it. For those in the community who are saying that this isn't enough, that they believe you or the city manager should step down, what would be your response to that? You know, there, there's a lot of emotions out there in the community and a lot of, lot of desire from community members uh, for justice and accountability. That's what you're seeing right now. I can tell you with the district attorney's uh, charges that were uh, filed today, they were on two people. And I believe the charges stand for themselves and actually answer that question that you just asked. There was not an investigation at that time, no ma'am. So did they not report it to the blue team? This is going back to the criminal investigation that's ongoing. And again, I can't comment specifically as to what happened during that course of time. That is something that will be worked through in this criminal prosecution. I'm sorry I can't answer that. I was not surprised by the charges, not surprised by the charges. Uh, my reaction is we have two former employees that were charged with crimes. They do not work here. So our reaction is uh, extreme disappointment. And uh, as a community, as a police department, as human beings here, we're very upset by it. Does this send a message to other officers in the department? I wouldn't say it sends a message. It sends a message to people to not uh, conduct themselves uh, to find themselves charged by the district attorney's office. Our officers that work here right now are integrity based. They have ethics. They have duty. They, they work so hard. So I don't believe they need to have a message sent to them because they already know right from wrong. They do it the right way. Those officers that are employed here today. Was the question, do these two officers have prior disciplinary hearing? Uh, no. Can you comment at all on the uh, city council's movement to potentially create a commission that would restore, I guess, the trust between the community and your department? Right. There's uh, obviously when you have an incident where former police officers are charged with a crime, you're going to have broken trust. We recognize that. We understand that. And when you have broken trust, there are many people in the community, many people in government who want to quickly restore that trust. Our police department wants to restore that trust. So there are a lot of, uh, 
ideas uh, being brought forward on how to do that. Some of them have to do with uh, trust commissions. Others have to do with uh, civilian oversight of the organization, civilian review boards. And I think it's normal when you have this much emotion and you have this type of a severe situation that you are going to have a lot of ideas to work through. But I anticipate uh, that, that there will be uh, some oversight in some fashion of this organization as an outcome from this uh, situation. And you welcome that? I welcome anything that can help our department be better so we can serve our community the right way. They do not. Our, our department has uh, a defined contribution plan for, for uh, folks in the private sector that would be similar to a 401k. So uh, uh, both of those two former officers were not uh, um, fully invested in that. So there's no uh, dollars coming out other than what they put in themselves. We took actions as soon as we found out about uh, the serious injury of this, uh, this incident, and that was on April 14th. And swift and immediate actions took place from that point forward until today's announcement of the uh, charges. If we would have known that on June 26, we would have implemented the same protocols as were implemented, implemented directly after April 14th. I do not know how long he'll be on administrative leave. The, uh, the investigation, as I stated, is independent of this police department, so we will not be involved in that. So that conversation will have to occur with those investigators. So I, I couldn't give you an answer on that. So he's going to stay on leave through the criminal case and then also through this third party investigation? Is that the I do not have a timeline on when he will uh, not be on administrative leave right now. He currently is, though. What would you say to Karen's family? Well, I would say to Karen's family, Ms. Gardner's family, is uh, I know they're, they're seeking justice and I know they're seeking accountability. And today there was a very strong message from this community of charges on two former police officers. Uh, that's, that really begins accountability and uh, justice. That's what I would say. I'm not going to get into the uh, personnel discussions of how those two departed the organization. Uh, they do not work here anymore. You said you've made changes to training of the officers. Have you also made changes so that if an incident like this happens in the future, you will learn about it quicker? We have, we have excellent stop gaps in our, in our uh, policies, in our reviews, in our supervisors uh, to find out when officers uh, are outside of policy or law. We are evaluating all of them right now to ensure that uh, we're better because obviously we did not know about this until April 14th, months later. So we are con continuously evaluating that. We also will anticipate that the assessment of the department will look at all our processes and how we review cases and how we supervise uh, to gain better understanding of how to do that better. We're always learning. Every day is a, is a learning uh, opportunity for our department. Uh, we've had great people reach out to our organization. We've had lots of people reach out to our organization and say, hey, what about this training? Or here's a training that might be beneficial to you. And we're looking at all of those. Uh, the Alzheimer's Association training was implemented very quickly. And that training was excellent. We also have some de-escalation training that we're going to send five officers to five sworn officers and possibly a non-sworn officer to go become an instructor in a de-escalation training through a particular group to bring that training and put that into our in-service in this organization. So we are constantly evaluating new, improved, and additional trainings. And then as far as, like, we were talking about the staff gap, and, and, and we've all talked about how, you know, you guys didn't find out until much later. Have you found some things that you can improve in that process so that some things wouldn't go unknown for so long? To answer your question, I would say uh, take a look at the charges that were filed on uh, Mr. Hopp. 
What do you mean by that? Do you mean like other officers will, because they see that you can be charged for like failing to intervene or failing to report, that they will make sure to do it? Our officers know that. They know that law. They know they have a duty to report. I would say with Officer Hop, uh, look at the charges that have been levied against him, and I believe your your question that you're asking, the answer is right there. Without these charges and without this case, though, if something were to go unforeseen again, have you guys already sort of, in your evaluation of this process, I guess what I'm asking, learned ways to make sure that that, that can occur or that we can do better? We're continually looking at the evaluation process. We do rely heavily on supervisors in the field. We require, uh, rely heavily on um, reviews of cases, and that is report reviews, body camera reviews, all availability uh, to, to take a look at stop gaps. And in fact, if one gets through and then we find out later, we will implement the process that we implemented on this one swiftly and surely. Uh, just like if we knew about uh, an alleged crime uh, immediately, we would handle that immediately in the same fashion. So it's very important. We take it very serious. Was failing to intervene or failing to re make a report a criminal charge before SB 617? And um, if not, is it fair to charge them now for an incident that happened before SB 217 was passed? The charging decision is by the district attorney, and he charged with uh, what the current laws are. But yes, failure to intervene and failure to uh, to um, report those have always been on the books as crimes. Yes. All right. Well, I appreciate every, everybody's times. I'm thankful for the questions, and thank you for covering this for uh, Mrs. Garner and for our community. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for watching. If you have a video you'd like me to review, email it or send it in via Facebook Messenger. You can also view this and other content on my website. If you're new here, subscribe for future content. If you've been around for a while, remember to like, share, and comment down below of what you think of this interaction. Shirts and other goodies are available at the Teespring store linked below. Channel memberships start at just a buck if you'd like to further support the channel and get a Slick Lack logo next to your name. I'll see you in the next video. All links are down below.